Hi, I'm Dr. Victoria Maddenly, and this is Better Humans at Work. In this week's episode, I'm joined by Dr. Paul Spradley. Paul is Assistant Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at Dollar Bank, based here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Paul recently made the transition into his current internal role from an external role doing consulting with a variety of organizations like someone like myself. In this episode, Paul talks about his transition from external to internal DEI consulting, the strategies he uses for gaining senior level buy-in for DEI work, and also what it means to Paul to build an inclusive workplace culture. I hope you enjoy our conversation as much as I enjoyed having it, and please remember to subscribe to this channel to be notified of future release episodes of Better Humans at Work. Paul has transitioned from an external uh, consulting role that I'm in uh, into an internal role as Dollar Bank's Assistant Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. So congratulations on that, Paul. Uh, mm -hmm. How has the transition been going? And can you share a little bit about where you were and where you are now to the audience? Absolutely. So uh, like you, I was, uh, my, my business was starting to ramp up during the uh, pandemic, which is interesting. A lot of folks that the business wasn't doing well, but it was, we had a really interesting time happen, uh, particularly with the pandemic and then the death of George Floyd and the death of Breonna Taylor and what we saw with Amy Cooper and using her privilege to make a phone call and say, I'm going to call and tell him a black man is assaulted me. So all these things happened while we were at a time where folks were had the opportunity to sit and watch. A lot of people weren't at work. So for us, the business as a consultant started to ramp up. And then folks reached out and said, you know, we are uh, looking to start diversity and inclusion and have it as a core focus of our organization. And went through uh, a couple of interviews, but I, I really liked uh, Dollar Bank. They had a, actually started planning for this position last year. So it was not triggered by all the things that had happened after May 26, the death of George Floyd. It, it wasn't triggered by those things. It was uh, like in a other, a lot of situations, maybe fast paced a little bit, but um, they, the conversations had actually started almost a year earlier about this uh, actual position. And the transition has been great. Like, I, I think that uh, the similarity for me in, in how I understand diversity of inclusion is that it's a process. The difference is, is that I'm here to help folks through that process as opposed to saying, here are the steps that you need to take through your process. So when I was consulting, I would, I would paint more of a picture and say, this, these are the steps that you need to take. Here's what you need to do first. Here's what you need to do next. Uh, while I'm here, I'm, I'm with everyone. I'm holding hands with, with my colleagues, and we're building collectively together. Um, and, and it's still a process. One of the things we keep that I run into a lot, and, and maybe you do and some of the folks in, in our world do, but sometimes people want a quick fix. They, they realize that diversity... Is, is a problem. And so they want, what's the thing that I can do right now to be good? And it's not like it, the one thing that you can do, I always tell people, the one thing that you can do is realize that this is an ongoing process. And, and if you can just be okay being in the game, being in this conversation, being in this work forever, then that's, that's the one thing that I want you to lean into because there's not, there's not one thing. Once you get better in this one space, you have to think about another space. How can I do better as I, as I relate to uh, people with disabilities and hiring folks uh, from underrepresented communities? In the market, right? So like once you identify one area that you can grow in, we have so much practice that there will always be multiple areas for us to grow in. So that's the one thing. I would say that's the biggest difference too because internally folks are very much process oriented. They, they, they want to know what's the thing, what's the step. And for us, it's this process for me has been about learning the organization, uh, learning about Dollar Bank, learning about our strength, what we're bringing to the table, and just building off of that. Yeah, I absolutely agree with the process approach. And there, you know, and and it's been I've been very hopeful and um, optimistic with seeing this new investment in DEI and companies really starting to understand that this is a long-term strategy. And I always try to equate it with equating DEI with leadership or with your people strategy. You're never done. Once, once you stop caring about developing your leaders or how your, you know, your overall employee experience, then that's when you start losing the game. It has to be constantly part of what you do as an organization. And I feel like companies are finally starting to understand that in a way that the check the box once a year diversity training days are quickly coming behind us. So you've been at Dollar Bank now for about six months. Is that right? Yep. 
So knowing that it's this long-term process and being embedded into the organization, how have you begun to build your roadmap or decide on you know, what goals to start with? You know, what, what's been your approach in, in, in developing that, that framework, that, that roadmap that's really setting you know, the whole stage for what you're going to be doing at Dollar Bank moving forward? Yeah. So again, I equate it to uh, being a consultant. Uh, I'm just a consultant in the organization, right? And so I go through the same process, first starting with uh, gathering information. What can I learn from people? What can I learn about the bank? What documents are there that I can begin to comb through? What are some of the habits and practices that people talk about that exist, but it's not written down, right? So it's like, oh, everybody knows to go here for this thing. It's like everybody, or is that just something that's cultural, right? And it's not, it's not about shaming us or the organization, it's just about figuring out where we're at. The yeah. first step for me has just been collecting information, an opportunity to meet with all of our senior leadership. Uh, we are positioned in multiple states. We had a few of them virtually, but I was able to come in and have a socially distant meeting with each of the senior leaders and just ask them the same kinds of questions, right? Like, and, and really it was, it was at, uh, figuring out what their thoughts were around diversity, equity, inclusion, what could be better what uh, has happened to this point, you know, what do they think the core values of the bank are? And, and so uh, within those questions, some themes started to come out, which is the same process. You know, if you were consulting, you would look for themes. Themes started to arise. And, and so that was level, that's tier one. And then, you know, the next part of that process is, is doing a, an organizational wide assessment, uh, cultural assessment, climate assessment, which we're looking to just hear from the people. I've been fortunate enough that when I arrived, there was uh, there was some media there, attention around my name. So some people in the organization have already reached out to me, speaking about their thoughts on uh, culture, speaking about their thoughts on equity and inclusion, and what can be different, what can be done. So I've been hearing from people, uh, and I think that that piece is critically important. In fact, when I started in my second week, I reached out to three or four, I would call them big players in the game, uh, folks who've been at big organizations doing diversity, equity, and inclusion work for a long time. And one of my mentors, she said, just be quiet. Don't do anything. Don't say anything for the first few months. And she's like, and I actually wish I'd taken a little bit longer in that quiet phase because like, there's a lot that you pick up mm -hmm. just from listening, just from learning, just from asking questions. One of the things about working as a DE and I professional in an organization, and it's really a value add, but I get to come in and learn about each part of the bank. Sometimes people, they have an expertise in one area, um, but I, have, I get the opportunity to come in and, and learn about that area. I'm not going to be an expert there, but I will figure out how it connects to the bank, the bank's core values, uh, and then how we can work together around making sure that there are equitable practices they're being inclusive in their workspace. So I'm learning about a lot of what happens inside this organization. And I think that that, that time is just really important. Absolutely. And you mentioned developing these relationships and building partnerships. I'm curious specifically around senior leaders. I feel like that's just an ongoing theme in DEI work in general. How do we get buy-in of these senior leaders and how do we engage senior leaders and what role should senior leaders play when it comes to advancing DEI efforts? And I'm curious if you have some thoughts on uh, the role of senior leadership in DEI. Yeah, senior leaders are crucial, right? And so one of the things that happened that was a, a win, let's say for diversity, equity, inclusion here and the work that I'm doing was in uh, November, in month three for me, I was able to do a 90-minute training with our senior lead. That's one of the things that I'm, I'm really strong at, is this idea of presenting, telling a story, bringing people in, engaging them. And so because I had, had that opportunity to do that, it was the last day before they shut down a second time the city. So we were in a, a really large um, conference room uh, that was really meant for, you know, 150 people, but there were 30 of us spread out in that room. I was able to capture buy-in by simplifying the concept. Senior leadership mm -hmm. buy-in is, is critical because you know, they influence their assistant vice president and their assistant vice presidents influence you know, their frontline employees and so forth. And so it goes down the chain. So if there's a senior level leader who can't understand why this makes sense, there could be a bottleneck in that part of you know, an organization. I've been fortunate because everyone has seemed to buy in. Uh, everyone says this makes sense. And, and one of the things that I did in the training was I didn't come from a, this is the right thing to do 
angle uh, because if it was, we would have done it already, right? And that's the case for everywhere. You know, like people, they say, well, it's the right thing to do. It is. And so was it, it was the right thing to do back in the 80s. And it was the right thing to do back in the 50s. And we just didn't do it. And so what's the other entry point into that conversation? So I started talking about the impact financially, uh, what this means about a changing demographic that, that are happening in the United States. What does it mean about buying Right, like people will now have choice, and they will take their money and go somewhere else if they do not feel they're being valued for who they are. And so, looking at those things, I just—it's really, I think, one of the ways you ask the question: How do you get senior leadership buy-in? One of the ways is to figure out what's important to them, and then uh, just ask questions around that until you, you you drop down, you tease into asking questions around diversity, equity, inclusion. Mm -hmm. So mapping on what's most important to them for their vision for the company and helping them see how de and is related to accomplishing that vision, achieving that vision, accomplishing those goals. Absolutely. And, and one of the things that uh, I think a good consultant will do at any time they're going into an organization is A, you listen well, and B, you tie in whatever you want to do into that organization's mission. You're not doing those two things. I call them fake salespeople, right? Like, and there's a bunch of them in, in, this, in this work. In fact, I remember when I was consulting, uh, at, at the end of the call, I said, listen, I think it makes sense for you to look at other uh, diversity inclusion practitioners, look at other people who are doing these trainings. But I will tell you this, if they don't ask you the same kinds of questions, if they're not asking, tying their process into your mission statement, I would caution against using them because you know there's a lot of people who can come in, make recommendations even before they've listened to the what the problem is. That feels fake and phony. Unfortunately, uh, you know we're in a field where there are people who will, because they're charismatic mm. speakers, they will get a nod to do diversity training someplace, but they don't really have the the capacity, the foresight, the understanding of of the how intricate and how deep. You have to understand the work and their mission and how you pair those two things. Does that make sense? The benefit that I have of being internal is I get to continue to have conversations and drop little nuggets here and there. So there, even if they aren't thinking about it, I get to encourage thought around it just on an ongoing basis. Um, I, I was walking in from lunch today and a, and a senior VP was like, hey, how are you doing? We started chatting a little bit. And he quickly asked for an update. And I was like, cool, I was getting ready to send this out anyway. Uh, but since we're talking about it, here's some things that are going on. I'm on people's minds. Being physically here, I get to do that. When you're a consultant, people will still say, what's the quick fix? But you have to think about different ways to sustain your relationships, to provide, to be present on top of mind for, for them as well, so that they, they know that you are going on this journey with them. Absolutely, absolutely. Speaking of the journey and what where we're all kind of working towards, I feel like the holy grail of DEI is this inclusive workplace culture, right? That's what we're striving to do. And, and you know, of course, having diverse representation all across your, your leadership pipeline from the top down to the bottom and having equitable and fair policies and practices, that's all falls under that. But you know, when it comes to specifically creating this inclusive culture. What does that mean to you? How do you define an inclusive culture? And you know, what have you have going on underway to reach that that eventual goal? Even though it's something that we mentioned before, it needs to be constantly nurtured and energy and investment needs to be put into that. But what does an inclusive culture mean to you? Yeah, so the I, I would say it it was the same as it was when I was consulting as it is right now. And it's it's the idea of just having people slow down and be a little bit reflective on their social engagement, their relationships that they have. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we just breeze through. Like and in the trainings that I give, I'll give the example of uh, working at a college campus and I would say, hey, how you doing? And I keep walking, but I would say that to uh, one of our Saudi students and the Saudi student would stop and would start telling me about what he had for dinner last night. So I'm five feet away already. And uh, I'm like, wait, you really wanted to tell me. So I like my, in my American mindset, I, I say, hi, how are you? But I keep moving. And so what does it mean for me to slow down that process and understand the dynamics that are happening in that, even that brief exchange? I'm saying like, we could, we could do that and be reflective with all of our relationships, right? Like, so when leaders,
leaders are meeting one-on-one -on -one with their staff, what, what are the dynamics that are happening? What's happening from a leader's position? How are they leaning into the conversation? Do they seem interested? Are they, give, are they asking questions? Or is it like, so what's the exchange like? Just slow that process down and think about it for a second. And, and that's what's, what we're encouraging here as well too, right? Like to slow down the process of what is normal and see, is there an opportunity that I could be a little bit better in this? Can I listen a little bit differently in this space? Can I ask yeah. a different question in this space? Is there a chance that I'm offending you in this space? There's people that will often say, well, that wasn't my intention to offend that person. I was just joking. All right. Okay. That's, and that is your statement. We'll put a period at the end of that. The next statement is, is it possible that you could have hurt the other person's feelings? You could have offended them. Oh, yeah, I guess it's possible. Okay. Without you explaining anymore, like, like I'm just, that was really more of a yes, no question. I just want you to slow down that process and consider the other person on the other side. So that is easier said than done um, because people have lots of practice. And so sometimes what works in small spaces is slowing down the process for them, giving people like role play in real life, in real time, so that they can see mm -hmm. what a real life conversation looks like that might have some harm in it, baked into it. That, that's, uh, oh, that's just good, clean fun. Oh, that was just a little, just a little rumor. Like it's not, it wasn't, I mean, my intention, people always talk about their intention, they still hurt, you know, even if it wasn't intended, yeah. even if it wasn't intended to hurt, it still hurts. Yeah. Impact over intention and giving people the tools they need to slow down and recognize the impact their behaviors have on others and not get caught up in the intention that they intended that they wanted that to have or not wanted that to have. I love that. Well, I'm so excited for everything you're doing at Dollar Bank and, you know, just seeing the impact that you're having on the DEI space here in Pittsburgh. Uh, how can others follow your work and what you're doing? How can they stay in touch and, and stay in the know with all the great DEI work that you have in store for Dollar Bank in Pittsburgh? Yeah, so uh, Dollar Bank has uh, a social media presence, and I'm actually in the process. We actually have a meeting coming up. We're going to talk about our our uh, strategic plan around social media. I, you know, so there's going to be things coming out for me all the time through Dollar Bank. There's going to be uh, job opportunities that we're going to be promoting and things like that. So our, our social media presence will, will see an uptick going in 2021, um, and I'm happy to be a part of that. But also, you know, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook. On Instagram, uh, and all those spaces. So uh, you can always reach out to me and connect. And I enjoy having these conversations. I so enjoy you in these conversations as well. Thank you for connecting with me today, Paul. And yeah, yeah just keep keep doing your the great work you're doing. <laughs> <laughs>